and with plans with Ange and today I'm back with a junk journaling video. So today I'm going to do something a little bit different than I normally do. So I want to do more junk journaling videos, some tutorials, some how to's, just kind of get people started and figure out what exactly is junk journaling. Okay, so first I have a little list here. I will go through it. I will be showing you a couple things that are not on this list as well. So just bear with me there, but I just have my list to kind of help me. Okay. So these are the top journaling supplies that I use. You do not have to use these specific kinds. You can also use any kinds of things that you have. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Does not matter how much you spend or how little you spend. It doesn't matter. You can even go to the Dollar Tree and I will show you things that I have from the Dollar Tree as well, okay? So first I wanna talk about is glues. So right now I have three glues here. I'm gonna pop out one more just to be safe. Okay, so first I wanna talk about art glitter glue. I just found this, this is on Amazon and I've been using it consistently for a few months now and I love it. It's a permanent glue. Um, I even bought like a refill pack so I can fill this up. Um, and it comes with this fine tip here. If you can, let's see if you can see that. So um, you can get really close to like those edges, okay? Um, it does come with a little needle and a pin so you don't, your glue doesn't dry because this stuff will dry, okay? I'll figure that out later. Okay, next one is Fabri-Tac. Okay, this is also another newer one I finally just bought because I was using tacky glue. That does not work. Okay, so Fabri-Tac is, it bonds with fabrics, lace, glass, wood, and trim. So this one, it dries very fast, okay? And it's a clear glue. So it'll dry really fast, but this is good for like your lace, like it says your fabrics, different things like that. I will show you what I'm talking about. Um, so I used it to glue the cover on and also like um, the lace on and it dried clear. You can't even tell that it's there or whatever. Same thing in the back. I mean that you can see, I'm gonna cover my strings up, but that was a different kind of fabric. Okay, and then regular tacky glue. I use this sometimes, it's just an all-purpose all purpose, um, adhesive that you can also use as well. Before I had glues, I used crafter's tape. This stuff is also permanent, it works great. However, if you have something that's really thin, like a doily or something, and you try to like run it over, it does try and take the paper up. So you have to be really careful on what exactly you are going to use this for. Mind you, I've also seen people use like Elmer's glue, things like that. So there's really, there's really no right or wrong glue, okay? Those are some of the things that I use. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about scissors, okay? This one is pretty simple to understand. So this one, I actually have like a three pack of this kind. I got from the Dollar General for like, I think $5 for three pairs of scissors see if I can find it. So I got a large size, a medium size, and a small size for like five bucks. Okay. I thought that was a pretty good deal. They're pretty nice. They are steel. They're metal. I mean, obviously I've got dye and stuff on them, but they work great. Okay. So I suggest a regular size scissors because you'll need scissors to cut. And then also a small one in case you have some of like the more intricate and more detailed stuff that you're trying to cut around, okay? Because you will have that. Um, and then I've had these for so many years. I have a whole package of them. These are just what I had, right? So they are different types of design. So when you cut your paper, that's what's gonna give you. So let me show you here quickly. I'm gonna grab one of my scraps in my scrap box here. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut you can kind of see what I'm talking about and it gives you that different effect okay again I have so many of these you guys remember these way back in the day 
I still have them and now I'm using them again. So those are another thing you can use for like scissors. If you don't want to, you can also just tear your paper. You don't technically need scissors if you want. I mean, I do tear my stuff. Sometimes it gives that cool effect. Like here's some paper. I literally just tore it, okay? And it gives the different edges. Okay, not a big deal. I'm not gonna, this one is technically not scissors, but I'm gonna clear this anyway. You just want a basic trim, basic trimmer. So that way you get that straight edge that you want and it comes out super nice. So again, let's just grab a piece of cardstock here. Doesn't matter how you do it, okay? I always just make sure this is at the very top though to cut it, okay, line it up. I mean, it does not matter what, okay? I've got a few of these paper trimmers, but I wanted one that was at least 12 inches because a lot of my paper, I will show you later, are 12 inches. So the one that I have that's like super cheap is not that long. I mean, you can use that one, but like I said, it's not that long. And this one's like super old too. This one's like super little. I don't remember where I got this from, like the dollar store maybe years ago. So I have upgraded since then. Okay, another one of my must have tools that I use all the time now is a bone folder, okay? This one will give you a nice crease, make sure that everything is lined correctly and how you want it. So I will kind of show you what it is. So let's grab our card stock that we had. So you can fold it and get what you need, right? But sometimes the, the crease doesn't come down all the way. So what I do, this is why I love it, is you'll use the angled edge and then push down, okay? And now you have that solid crease. So you can open up whatever you need. It's there. Sometimes you might need to go over it a couple of times, but that way it like really make it grabs your paper. Okay, it's really good. I use this all the time. That's why there's also, there's ink on there as well. So that's one of the things that I always use. Okay, so next, this one, of course, you can get anywhere. You can even make your own, okay? Next I'm talking about is paper. So let's just, we're gonna do scrapbook paper, okay? This is one of my 12 by 12 folders. These are just my loose leaf papers or if they're larger scraps that don't fit in my scrap box, that's what I have. Okay, this was a 12 by 12 that I cut down So I put it in here, okay? Any kind of paper. So let me show you. Okay, I even have doilies. I got this package that had multiple sizes in them from the dollar store, okay? There's multiple sizes. There's huge ones, there's small ones, okay? For a dollar. I mean, I got this when it was a dollar, so now it's a dollar twenty-five. But any kinds of paper you guys can use, okay? I got single papers that I bought from Hobby Lobby and Michaels of various sizes. I have digitals, you can use digitals. It really does not matter what kind of papers you have, okay? So those are some of my single sheets that I have here. Um, also, you can use cardstock if you have cardstock. Um, I do have some cardstock, let me pull it out here. So this is a multi-pack I bought recently from Walmart for like $3 and it has all the colors in it. Um, primary, pastel, and neutral colors. And these are just six by six, which I use this size a lot. Okay, so let me show you here some hard stuff. That thicker material that you have, okay? These are card stocks, okay? What I showed you is this is cardstock, just different colors, okay? So another thing of papers that I use, book pages. Okay, Lee's literally, I went to a thrift store um, or yard sales 
and I just took out the binding and just used book pages. I use so many things with these book pages. You can tear them up, add different things to them. It doesn't matter. Um, I received a swap recently and they put some book pages around it. I did the same thing for my person as well. Okay. And then also we just have random paper to show you. So I did a bunch of stuff from like Timu. I've shared them already on my page. So I bought a pack of just papers. These are music sheets um, that I had purchased random sizes. So the last one, I need to make some more because I'm getting low on actually. Oh, I found my, now I found my book pages. Okay, this is where I keep my dyed paper. Most of these are tea dyed. I don't drink coffee. I didn't want to buy coffee. I mean, honestly, I could have for like a dollar because that's what I did with the tea. So this is just tea dyed paper that I literally just dyed with tea, okay? It looks gross because that's how my pan was. It's old pans. But it gives you that that texture and it looks so nice on your in your junk journal. So obviously you can tell I'm getting low. I did so many of these. But I just this is literally copy paper, white copy paper, and then I just dyed it with tea bags that I bought. And they are in my journal that I haven't started yet, but you it looks so nice when it's like in there together. This is my first journal, so don't come at me. But look at them, they're like, they just go so perfect with them, you can't even see. Okay, so that is all that I have for paper. Okay, so journals, I'm in the process of making some, but then I also bought this from Hobby Lobby. You don't have to go out on a journal, you can use a random notebook. That's what I started doing, but I wanted somewhere to keep all my stuff that I do. So I bought this journal. I wanted like plain paper. So I wanted one that has this kind of paper so I can add whatever I wanted. Um, and there's so many pages. I think I finally, no, I'm not even done yet, I don't think. I'm almost done with the first stitching in this notebook, if that tells you anything. So you can decorate them how little, how much, it does not matter how you decorate them. So that's one of the journals. Again, when I keep showing you, this is one that I handmade out of oatmeal box. I will never use this size again. I'm gonna use something smaller because I have a space there, which is what I added my folio into which I made as well. So I'm gonna put that in there as well. But this is a journal. This is just handmade out of all the different papers. Doilies, scrapbook papers, co um, copy dyed or tea dyed papers, digital. Okay, and then I have one more I haven't started yet because I'm kind of nervous. I'm gonna be honest. I'm nervous about using it, okay? This one on the advent calendar last year and I haven't used it yet, but I'm so nervous. But I see people who use them and like they make amazing spreads. But look how tiny that is. You can definitely make spreads with this, okay? So there's my, uh, also a mini journal. I don't know where I got this from, because again, it was from an advent calendar. Okay, so next, one of my top things that I use is ephemera. So I'm not gonna pull out my thing, because I got this new organizational thing. So I'm gonna show you things that I always use some of these are free things I found online. Some of them are things that I bought. Again, the dollar store, it does not matter, okay? Stickers, Timu is a great place to go. You can find a lot of free stuff on, or not free, but really, really cheap stuff on Timu. Okay, which is this roll of stamp. So this is a stamp one. These are some kinds of ephemera. Some of these are like stickers and then they will peel off as clear and you can see that some of them are just paper you just put glue on okay so those are some kinds of ephemera one of the big ones I use is flowers okay these again these are from the dollar store okay I found them in their back 
I already seen them yesterday. They're die cuts or like cardstock, but they're sunflowers. Okay, and just add them for elements onto your page, embellishments, it doesn't matter. Also, I got these from the dollar store. Again, they're back because it's fall with the sunflowers. So you can add these to your spreads if you want. And then a bunch of flowers. Some of these were gifted to me. Some of them I bought, but it's just random flowers. And then also I love butterflies. So again, different kinds of butterflies in there that you can add. From I got some of these from Amazon, some of them for digitals. Like this, these two are digitals and throwing butterflies at you that I got from a um, Patreon package. Like it does not matter where you get them from. I have stickers I'll show you here too that I got from the Dollar Tree. Okay. Like they have a lot of these stickers at the Dollar Tree. They pop up, but they will make in great spreads. Okay, so there's some ideas for embellishments. I kind of already showed you the die cuts. I'm gonna show you one more quickly. And some of these I actually got from a garage sale. So for like 50 cents. So this is just one of them. So lace, again, this is another form of like ephemeral that you can add, you cut it down, you can dye it, however you want. I got this, two big bundles like this, and another one for like 50 cents in a gallon size bag. Ribbons, you can use ribbons. Okay, so the, one of the last things I'm going to show you is some things. Some of them I have made, some of them other people have made. It just depends, okay? And these I'm just calling fillers, okay? It does not matter what it looks like. Let me see if I can find the ones that I have made. And of course I'm not. Okay, so a tag. This is a tag, okay? I will do a tutorial on how to make some of these things later, but this was in a pocket that was gifted to me. Again, I will show you that in another video later. I think it's like a double pocket, that's cool. Okay, so I showed you two in one, a pocket and then a tag. Okay, another one is journaling cards. Okay, I feel like I shouldn't be showing you these because these ones, these because these ones people have made. And like, I'm, I'm gonna show you mine, okay? Because it does not have to be perfect by any means. And I'm not saying that against people, okay, or whatever. Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. So it doesn't matter where you start, what you do, whatever. Okay, so here's a little tag slash journaling card that I made. Just stuck some embellishments on there. Here's another one that I made. It wasn't as thick, so I had a coffee dyed paper to the back and then cardstock and then made it a little pocket in the front. Okay, that's an example. Um, a cluster. Again, just a bunch of papers I put together and made it into something. Okay, cluster. And then also like these are po different pockets and I'll show you guys how to make these at another time. These are pockets that you guys can add. Okay. So I'll kind of show you. I didn't dye them. I didn't do anything special. I just made them. Here's a pocket. There's a pocket. Okay. Oh, and then if you want, you can also do it behind here as well. Unless I taped. No, I didn't. And there's a pocket. So there's a three pocket thing. This one's more complex. It has four pockets. Just kidding. Just three. But if I taped it down, I could sneak it behind the paper like that as well. Okay, so those are some ideas. Um, an envelope. You know, I didn't glue it down, but here's an envelope and put it in there. Here's an envelope that someone had made for me. Just reuse an envelope and just decorate it. Make it look pretty. Okay, it does not have to be perfect. Just start somewhere. So I hope I gave you guys some ideas some things that you might want to do 
in the future with some of the journaling supplies. Um, you can even go online and find free digitals. It doesn't matter. You know, just start somewhere as long as you start because then you won't ever finish. If you don't start it, then you won't know what you can do. So I hope that I encouraged you. Those are my top eight of my things that I always use in a spread, in my junk journaling spreads. No matter what I'm doing, I'm always using those things. And you can tell, like, like I said, a lot of those things you can buy from the dollar store. It does not matter. Just promise me that you guys will just start and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye friends.